Hello fellow Final Cut users, my name is John Williams and this is a video tutorial about how to crop, move, and scale a photo or image in Final Cut. These are all three things that can be done using the motion tab of the viewer. How to crop a photo. I've loaded up this uh, clip art of a jet to use for the demonstration. Now primarily like I said we're going to be using the motion tab of the viewer so to get the file up in the viewer you just double click it and then it'll pop up right here. So you click the motion tab and you're greeted with this toolbar all these different tabs of options you can use that will be primarily what we'll be using in this tutorial. So go ahead and open up the crop tab and you'll see these sliders left, right, top, bottom, and edge feather. The first four are pretty self-explanatory. Each slider has a number. The higher the number the more crop it is going all the way up until it, it completely erases your picture. And so depending on how much you want, you can change it. So leave it about there. Obviously, whichever slider you use, that's where the crop comes in. So if you use the top slider, the crop comes down from the top. If you use the bottom, it comes up from the bottom. If you use the right, it comes in from the right, etc. Edge feather is another crop tool, only this one crops all around and gives it a sort of faded look on the edge. It's a nice way of uh, adding a little look to your picture instead of just the bland outside line. So I'll leave it like that for now. Now, an interesting thing about the crop effect is that you can use what are called anchor points, just like you'll be using later in the, in the video. Anchor points are these little dots right here that are, create keyframes. So if I want, say, at the beginning of my video, for it to be this far cropped, I hit this little dot. Now that's where it is. Now if I move the slider over to the end of its little 10 second lifetime, I can change this to, say, right here, and click another keyframe. It'll automatically do it for me. So now it's going to go from 43 to 1, and as the video plays, it automatically does that. And that can be the same for any of these. So if I want it to be, and it doesn't have to be at the front of the start either, so maybe around here, I want there to be a crop of 0. We'll say, just start there. So I put my keyframe, and maybe around here, I also want it to come in maybe 5. Not much, but it adds the effect of this plane kind of shrinking. And finally, it can be done with everything, including the edge feather. So I put that one there, and maybe... You want towards the end it to be a little higher. And then now you've got this nice video of it slowly shrinking. Now if you want to do it manually, you can. You can just grab them. You can pull them left, make the effect go longer. You can't pull them down in manually, but you can pull them left and right, up to the point where it'll either change really fast or really slow. So you can see that the completely changes how fast it crops in. But it's a cool little effect that allows you to change your crop if you want a picture to slowly reveal or something like that. And that is how to crop images in Final Cut. Now I'm going to demonstrate how to apply a scale to an object in Final Cut. Now I've loaded up my plane into Final Cut and I've opened it in the viewer and I've got it set to the motion tab. Here under basic motion you can see a very similar slider to that under the crop. And much like the slider in the crop, simply by moving it left or right you can affect how big or how small the plane is or by entering a numeric value. like so. Now once you have it to an appropriate scale, it pretty much will it'll stay that way for the whole video unless you do a keyframe just like you did with crop. So if we set one at the beginning, you can move it forward to the end, drastically increase the scale, and the program will automatically scale it up as the video progresses. And again, you can change it so that it scales faster, or that it even goes back down once you're done. And so that way you can have a video of objects going up, increasing in size, or zooming out for whatever purpose you may want. And that is how you scale an object in Final Cut. For the final part of this video, I'll be demonstrating how to apply a very useful tool of Final Cut to your videos. This is the tool of motion. Much like with the other effects of scale and crop, Final Cut will change the position of your object as time goes on automatically through the setting of key points. This is done through the anchor point settings. Anchor points are X and Y coordinates that determine where your object lies on the plane of the video. Now I recommend changing your view percentage to a little less than what it is right now. 67% usually shows the entire image of what your movie will be. Now you're going to want to see a little beyond that so you can see where it is. So I'd change it to about 25 or 12. And 25% seems to work pretty well. Now your anchor point changes obviously with an X and Y. So like any X and Y coordinate system, adding X moves it to the left or to the right. Negative values move to the right, positive to the left. Y values move it up and down. Positive values move it up, 
negative values move it down. Now, in order to really have a significant change in your object, a really good motion, usually you want it to start outside the screen and then on another area outside the screen again. So, now, depending on the size and scale of your file, the numbers are going to be bigger or smaller. So if we set this to, say, negative 900, that moves it forward. Well, I want my plane to be flying, obviously, in the forward direction. So I'm going to go ahead and add a nice, big, positive number there. But it's still not quite all the way. So you'll have to uh, screw around with it until you get it absolutely right. Okay, so right now it's out. Now, if you double-click it, you will see exactly where it is. This blue box represents where my picture is, which is why I recommended switching to 25%. So you can see exactly where it is. Now, the advantage of this is you know that it's right near the edge. So right now I know that this is going to enter the video pretty much as soon as the video starts. Now in some cases you might go way all over and your object might be way over here and it'll take forever before it even enters your video. So just like before, you hit to make a keyframe, go over to the right, pick wherever you want it to end, and then you do the opposite. I recommend, honestly, if you're just going to the other side, put a negative sign in front of it. Now it's on the other side. Now you have this nice video of a plane flying by. Now that seems a little slow to me. Obviously, most planes aren't that slow. So I'm going to go ahead and shorten it, just like we did before. Now my plane is significantly faster. Though not quite as fast as I would like. So once again, shorten it. Now it really seems like a plane going by. Now this also works in the Y coordinates as well. So we started out a little lower, because that's where planes start. Now I'm going to go ahead and try my hardest to line it up with the bottom of the frame. The big thing is to make sure that your time in the viewer is where you're trying to work. So you set me. So like right now I'm going to make sure it's here. Change 750. So that's where it is now. Now if I change it like this, it's going to get to 50 by the time it gets here. I'd like it to be a little higher than that. So I'm going to go ahead and change that to uh, 150. Now if we zoom back in to the fit to window. We can play our video as how it will be viewed to our audiences. You have this nice clip of this plane pretty much taking off. And that is how you move objects in Final Cut.